Okay, hello everyone. Victor Momo from Excel Moments. If there are two questions I get asked the most, you know, on maybe videos I post and in forums that I belong to, is oh, why did we use a map there and not a by row? Could we have used by row in place of map? So that's one question. The other one is oh, you used a reduce. Could we not have used scan? Okay, so those are the two questions I think I get asked the most and I feel that it's coming from a place of maybe not understanding fully how you know these functions work or how they are designed to work you know and that's what I've decided to address in two videos so this one is going to address by row and map and the other one we address scan and reduce and my objective is not to solve every problem that map and by row can solve but just to compare and contrast both so that when you see a problem you are clear in your mind you know which one to use and um, you already know which one wouldn't work right and so you don't even bother using it and when it doesn't work it's not a shock to you it's more like yes i expected this okay you know so i want you to uh, more or less have a better understanding of how the functions work and how the functions don't work okay so map and biro are you know part of the lambda helper functions just like scan reduce you know by call is omitted and they are designed for specific purposes Okay, so I took this table of chat GPT, just made slight modification to it because it was good enough for what I needed to do. Now, in terms of the purpose for map, it says, oh, apply a custom lambda function to each element in one or more arrays. Note what it says here, in each element. By row, the name is been named aptly. It's applying that lambda function or the transformation to each row in an array. So let me explain that clearly. Um, I don't like to say, oh yes, apply a custom lambda function. What I just think about is that it's applying a calculation or a transformation, you know, to the element. So let's say I have an array, which is one, two, three, four, five, right? And what I want to do is I want to multiply each of these values by two. I want to double the values of each of them. That's the transformation I want to do. You can call that a custom lambda function to do that. But the point is, it's a transformation. You're converting something to something else so i want to multiply everything here by two i can use a map function map would go element by element and multiply each of them by two so one two three four five will become two four six eight ten okay now it goes element by element by row is actually going row by row you know it will start with row one row two row three row four row five but in this case when it goes to the row the row has only one cell the row basically is an element in this case so for this example map and by row will do basically the same thing reason is because we have just one column of data so going element by element is the same as going row by row but once this becomes a multi-column array meaning it has multiple columns then it's no more the same thing because if i have here two four six eight ten right and if i feed this into map map is saying ten things because map counts element by element by row is saying five things because by row counts row by row you see the difference at least have that you know in mind map is saying ten elements by row is seen five elements because they are counting differently. Map is counting element by element. By row is counting row by row. Okay, so that's the most important thing to note. Row by row is for by row. Cell by cell or element by element is, um, you know, is map. Okay, then map can also take multiple inputs for its arrays, uh, but by row just takes one. So you see here, it's basically just array. But map, array one, array two. You can you do that i may show you an example on that i think the that's the most important thing i needed to mention there that yes map can work with multiple you know arrays but by row you know cannot then in terms of the output this is what's really important and sometimes when you think about your output you already know which one not to use okay so for the output map will give you an output that is the same dimension as the input so meaning if i give map this which means I've given it five rows by two columns. The output will be five rows by two columns, okay? So it's like a one-for-one one type of thing. If you give it multiple arrays like this, array one and array two, the size would be the dimension of each of the arrays. That's one array because array one and array two will have the same dimension anyway, okay? So, but for by row, when you give by row, even if you've given by row this, by row, for each row, by row wants to return one value. So it doesn't matter whether there are 10 columns in that row by row wants to return one value for every row okay so in this case by row is going to be returning five answers one per row map is going to be returning ten answers one for each element let's get to an example 
it will become much clearer now. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to do a transformation. My transformation is to increase the values I have here by five. You don't need map or biro for this. So this is really a waste of map and biro, but I'm doing it to make a point. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say map. I give it this as my array. Okay. So, and then I go to the Lambda portion, which is where I do the calculation and I create a variable. My variable X here is just an iterator, something that would iterate through every element in the array. So meaning that when the calculation starts, X will pick up the first value, which is 79. And it says, oh, what do you want me to do with that value? I say, okay, I want you to do X plus five. Okay, so it knows now that anything he sees adds five to it. So he stores it as 84. He keeps it. It's going to be the first thing it will output. When it's done that, he says, okay, well, I see that you have more elements in the array. X goes to the next one, which is 85. He says, what calculation do you want to do? It's X plus five again, 85 plus five, 90. He stores that in there too. And it keeps going till it runs out of elements and then it outputs the result. And that's what you see here. Okay, so you see that basically map has given us the same, you know, I've done the same calculation for each of those values and increased all of them by five. Let's see what by row would do in this case. And if you followed what I explained <laughs> just, you know, a minute ago, you already know what this is going to be. It's basically the same because by row is also seen, even though it's going row by row, but here in this case, every row has just one cell. So by row is seen the same thing as map is seen. So in this case, where you have a single column, a column vector, map and by row, you know, are equivalent. Okay. So I don't want to say more than that there. Let's go to another one where we now have two, you know, columns. This is where things start to get interesting. What I want to do is the same thing too. I want to increase both values by five. Okay. So I'm going to use map and I'm going to give it both, right? Okay, so my array is now two columns and I say X here. X is going to be element by element. So if there are how many of them here, if this is, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe yes. So if there are 20 elements here, I expect 20 also, the same dimension. So it's going to be two, you know, 10 rows by two columns, 10 by two. Okay, so let's do X plus five here, right? Close bracket. So basically you can see everybody as in is increased by five. That's what it does. Okay. Nothing surprising there. So let's see what by row does here. Let me see. What do you think it's going to do? Pause the video and think. <laughs> All right. Okay. And this is what I expected you to do. Why? Because when you get into the by row, when you say here X, what does X mean here? X means the row, right? So X is not an element. X is the row. So this is what X is here on the first row. This is X. Now, you now say X plus 5. Okay, if it does X plus 5, it gets this. But by row can only output one value for every row. But after it did the calculation, it got 84 and 61 internally in memory. But now you're expecting it to output what? The two of them. It can't do that. Because for every row, it is only going to give you one result, which is why it is useful when you want to do summarize, you know, summarization. So if you want to uh, maybe do a sum, a max, a mean, an average, then this is good because it takes everything there and then it kind of aggregates it into one value. So this is the reason why it throws up an error, because when it does the internal calculation, it comes up with two columns on that row and it doesn't know how to output the result because by row only wants to output one value for that row. But if for some strange reason, I decided, no, you know, don't do just X plus five, do sum of X plus five. Just that simple, you know, change makes everything different. What will happen? X plus five would be 84 and 61, right? Like you have here. Okay. So it's going to be 84 and 61. Sorry. It took off my, and then when I put a sum around it, it's going to sum and then it gives you one value. So this is why it now works because this is what by row sees 84 and 61 and it can't output the two of them on one row. So if you then give it anything that does a transformation that collapses it into one value, then by row can do it. So it could have been a sum. It could have been, you know, maybe for example, array to text. Okay. So it could have been, you know, an array to text, meaning join the two values, 
you know, separate by a comma. But so long as it's giving you one output, you know, it's able to work. Okay, so that's just the point on this one. Right, so let's look at this one here. What I want to do is that for each row, I want to get, you know, the sum of the individual values after breaking them apart. That's like break them apart, um, you know, like a text split with comma space and then get the sum. The question now is which of these functions can work here? In my mind, without testing it, I can say, oh, by row would work map would also work why because i'm looking at the input and i'm like okay the input is you know one column right and what i need at the end of the day is one value for each row okay so for a map is the same thing because map will give me exactly the same dimensions as the input and by row is fine with that by row is like oh you want one value for each row oh then i'm good so let me do a map first so this is the range i use a lambda I say x x here of course in this case is element by element so what do you want to do with x the first x is five seven eight you want to do a text split right you want to split x based on a comma space that's what you want to do okay and then when you split it the values you get you want to sum them that's what you want to do okay so i purposely have made you know an error here so that we learn something Okay, so it gives me zero, right? And you're like, Victor, what's going on? Well, nothing <laughs> much here. Basically, the text split returns a text, and this needs to be numbers for it to work. So you can do a zero plus here, okay? And then now you see that we have the sum for each of the elements, row by row. The same thing would happen if you change it to a by row, right? Because it's basically the same thing in this case. So you see nothing changed so by row and map work in this case but once the dimension of the input array you know is not a column vector one column then it becomes interesting let's quickly look at you know two last examples for this one what i want to do is that for each row i want to get the sum from january to june okay so for dave i want to see what his you know sum is from january to june for uh minda i want to see the same thing the question now is which should i use should it be map or should it be by row the answer is not map <laughs> why because map would give you an answer which is the same dimension as the input so it means if you give map this your output would be just a replica of this you know here something like that but that's not what you want you want one value per row so you need something that goes row by row and then aggregates for each row so a by row is what you need in this case so if you do by row and you give it this and you do lambda and you say x x here means a row so if you do sum of x what this means is that for everything you see on that row sum it and return it for me okay and you can see that that gives you the answer of course uh, the lambda fans will say, oh, Victor, you don't need to do this right now, you know, with the eta lambdas, you can just do some, you know, I know, but again, I'm considering my audience, <laughs> okay, so, all right, so now you see why the biro is the appropriate thing to use here and not map because of the objective, okay, let's look at this one, so now in this case, what I want is that for each element, this is 578, this is 545, I want to see the sum for each one. So for this one here, the sum is 20. If you break it and add it, I want to see 20. Here, I want to see 14. Here, I want to see, you know, 10 and so on. So for each element, I want to see the sum after, you know, doing a text split and then adding it together. What do I need to use here? I need to use a map because I'm trying to get an element by element result, right? So I'm going to do map, okay? This is basically a replica of the of what we solved in the first part. The only difference is that it's multi-column this time. Okay, and then we do text split, we do X, we split by comma space, right? So we can add, you know, zero to it, and then we do a sum, close, 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 right? Okay, and so this is basically everything. So, but what if, on the contrary, I wanted to have one value per row, meaning like, all these numbers together if they were just in one cell i want to break it down and then have one value as you know uh the sum what would i do in that case in that case i would use a by row but somebody would be tempted to say oh victor you know just put a by row here i can tell you that that answer is wrong 
and that will be your assignment to figure out why this is not correct <laughs> okay right but but by row does something right it gives you one you know one value per row but that's not what you want you can bet that the total of this whole thing is definitely more than 32. i can tell you you know i'll just put a screenshot when i'm editing you know what's going on kind of but let me show you how we will solve it you know with by row so if i you know gave this to by row for example and i did lambda <coughs> And I say X in this case, as in X is a row, right? So one row. So X here has this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell. So what I can do is I can join all of them together so that it forms one long string. Okay. So that's like saying I can use a text join over X or I can use array to text over X. So what it will do is that it will concatenate every cell in that row, right? And this is like one long string. So if this is one long string, I can then split that, you know, using comma space. Okay. Right. And then the rest of it is just the same. So I can do some, I can do one times or something, you know, so I close that, I close the red, I close this. Okay. And this is the right value. So that's how, you know, you do it. I mean, just a hint for the other one that the by row gave, the by row was actually picking like the first element from each one, like 5 plus 5, 10 plus 5, 15 plus 5, 20 plus 4, 24 plus 3, you know, uh, 27 plus 5, 32. That's how I got the 32 there. So, but that's not what you wanted. Okay. So I hope this helps you, you know, to kind of see, you know, by row and map there are many more examples i could you know do but i'm seeing that i'm already running on 17 minutes you know so um just to give you a good idea so you're clear in your mind when by row works and when map doesn't work the first thing you need to know is that map does an element by element transformation so if you have 10 um values in the input you get 10 values in the output by row sees things on a row by row basis so even if there are 1000 cells if there are 10 rows the answer is just going to be 10 values that's what you need to know so by row works well when you want to aggregate things maybe by row sum mean max you know any of the subtotals that you want to do you know but if you want to perform element by element transformation then map should be what you should be thinking about i hope you know this makes it clearer for you if you like this video please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moment yes we need more subscribers for sure okay for now i'm out